welcome everybody to this lesson where we are going to be looking a bit at formal theater spaces. So this lesson is geared towards the Form 2 syllabus. It Form 2 coverage of this topic, even though it's also covered in the higher level at um, CSEC level, at Form 5 in a little bit more depth. We are going to look generally at formal theater spaces here so we get a grasp of the topic, just the rudimentary points. Um, so let's get right into it. Just very briefly on our agenda, we are going to look at the features of formal theater spaces as well as the main types of formal stage designs being proscenium, arena, thrust, and traverse. So when we talk about formal theater spaces, what are we talking about? We are talking about buildings that are purpose-built, meaning that they are designed specifically for performances. Even though they may be used for other things, um, they do have the facility to, to facilitate <laughs> um, lighting and sound and stagecraft, um, so things that will contribute or complement uh, performances and usually elaborate performances as well. So we're thinking about spaces that are built for this purpose right that's the main defining factor and we're going now into the features of formal theater spaces this diagram that you see in the picture is actually of shakespeare's globe theater um, in case you may have wanted to know so let's look at some of the parts and features then so on stage as the name suggests obviously or, or what we might also call the playing area, is the part of the stage that the audience sees during the performance and the parts of the stage that the performers have uh, available to use and to move around. Off stage, of course, are any areas that are not where the performance is taking place. However, off stage areas also include areas that are accessible to the audience. Whereas backstage refers specifically to the areas that are just off stage as in the back of the stage, side of the stage, these areas that only the cast and crew can move about in. So we're talking about the wings, the dressing rooms, the lighting and sound booths, that kind of thing, where the cast and crew are operating. So the tricky thing here is to realize that all backstage areas are offstage, but not all offstage areas are backstage. It's a little bit confusing, but just to be clear, anywhere that is not on the stage is offstage. So we're talking about, again, anywhere that's accessible to anybody um, who is moving through the theater space, so including front of house areas. But backstage is the area that is reserved for cast and crew. So I'm going to insert a link here to a video um, by the National Theatre in London that shows you a lovely um, behind the scenes view of all of their backstage areas and a few of their offstage areas as well. And what I want you to observe is how many steps and how many different technical skills go into making a production. Now, this is a quite a unique space um, where their rehearsal and their set construction, all of their stagecraft basically happens on site. Whereas typically you'd find that this would happen off site. So people would rehearse in a separate space um, to the performance space and they'd also construct their set, their props, their costumes and things like that off site. Um, whereas in the National Theatre, everything happens on the same compound. So moving quickly along, we're talking about the area where the audience is seated, which is also called the house. So obviously, front of house deals with everything that concerns the audience and the patrons. Sometimes you also call the backstage areas back of house. But when we're talking about front of house, we're talking about the people who are coming to patronize to a show, not necessarily the people who are going to be on stage or backstage. So let's head right now into the meat of the matter, talking about the types of formal theater stages. The very first one and the most common one is proscenium. So proscenium theater actually comes from the Greek word meaning in front of the scene. And obviously the audience are all situated at the front of the stage. Now, the main feature of a proscenium theater is the proscenium arch, even though in some designs it's not so much of an arch, it's kind of flat, like in the diagram that you're seeing here. So it's like the audience sees the action through 
an imaginary fourth wall that comes down from the proscenium arch so of course there are three erected walls or three imagined walls that are actually on the stage and then there's this invisible one as though you're seeing the action on stage through like as though it's happening in a box and you're looking through a broken down wall in that box now the seating in proscenium um, theaters are, is usually raked meaning that it is on an incline so that even the people in the back row can see without the people in front obstructing them whereas um, once upon a time the stage used to be raked and of course that's how we have the terminology of um, downstage and upstage um, so they flipped it around and decided that the smarter thing to do instead of stressing out the actors and the performers calves was to then put the seating um, on an incline rather than the stage itself so this is a picture of a proscenium stage again this is in the Naparima bowl and one of the defining features is the grand curtain or also called the grand drapes sometimes which closes off that imaginary fourth wall from the audience separating the playing area from the audience area or from the orchestra pit um, depending on the design of the theater so this is just a bit of a diagram showing you of course the proscenium arch this is in Sapa um, Southern Academy for the performing arts in Trinidad not much of an arch but still we're going to call it a proscenium arch and of course the wings being the parts of this that lead off stage or well lead backstage really and then the playing area or the stage being where all of the action happens and of course the auditorium or the house being where the audience is situated so let's talk a little bit about the curtains and the wings here again looking at the diagram the one that the biggest curtain of course is the grand curtain and the wings sometimes proscenium theaters have anywhere from three sometimes they have about two three four five maybe as many as six wings um depending on the size of the theater and this is an off stage well backstage off stage view of the wings in the National Academy for the Performing Arts. So you see they have one, two, three wings here, and this is actually a pretty big stage, right? Moving along now to our next stage type, which is the traverse stage. So the word traverse, if you think about it, means to walk back and forth or sideways and if you look at the stage in the diagram you could understand why it's called that this is a type of catwalk stage where the audience sits on either side of a rectangular stage facing each other now a traverse stage is not always um situated above as you see it as a platform in this diagram sometimes it's really just that space in between the seating is where the performance happens and you'll see that in the next slide as well now this is not very common because quite frankly it's a bit difficult to block it's a bit difficult to arrange movement for a stage like this um, but it's still one that can be very interesting to use in terms of dramatic techniques and so on. So this is an example of a traverse stage where it's not suspended, it is not raised on a platform, but just that area between the seating is where the action will happen. And as you can see, it's pretty intimate um, once you don't get distracted by the people on the other side of the room. So the next one we're going to look at is the thrust stage stage now we're thinking about the word thrust as well the interesting thing about all of these is that the name of the stage tells you quite a bit about the design so this is actually called three quarter round because the audience surrounds the stage on three sides and it's actually basically the opposite of proscenium because instead of the stage being um, sort of set in away from the audience it is thrust it is pushed out into the audience right and this is actually the type of stage that William Shakespeare preferred as you can imagine because the aud the audience is really involved in it it feels quite intimate even though it might be um, pretty big the the seating might allow quite a lot of people it is quite intimate because the audience feels much more part of the action than they probably would with a proscenium stage so this is a picture showing you another 
thrust or three quarter round stage as well and this particular one has a grand curtain though not all of them do and finally looking at our fourth stage type we are looking at the arena stage which is also called theater in the round now sometimes arena staging is actually in a circular format however in this diagram it is more or less in a kind of rectangular square kind of thing and you could imagine why they call it theater in the round because the audience completely surrounds the stage from all sides so the entrances and exits are actually provided through gaps in the seating called vomitoria um, or vomitoriums. Um, it actually does not have anything to do with vomit, <laughs> um, contrary to popular belief. Um, but it kind of borrows that, that design from places like the Colosseum in Rome, uh, where they used to have those things that I can't remember the name of right now. So in the next slide, I would usually have a video of an arena performance. However, I would definitely get copyrighted for it. So maybe you can look up one on your own <laughs> on YouTube, um, a video of a performance in the round. So now I'm going to teach you a really cool way to remember the arrangement of the seating. It is the four three two one rule or it might be one two three four depending on how you look at it so when the audience sits on four sides of the stage that is arena with thrust the audience sits on three sides of the stage with traverse the audience sits on two sides of the stage and with proscenium the audience sits on one we go four three two one or one two three four a really nifty way to remember the seating arrangement for the four main types of formal theater spaces that we look at at form two level so i hope you enjoyed that and of course if you have any questions you're free to comment them below thank you for paying attention